Hi, I'm Pastor Goodman, and this is the Largely Catechized Life. So we talked last time about judge not lest you be judged, and we're not done with it yet. Last time we talked about the difference between knowing sin and judging it, that you're allowed to recognize something as wrong. You're just not allowed to seek punishment for it. And that has everything to do with the Eighth Commandment. You shall not bear false testimony against your neighbor. Luther writes here, This is nothing other than meddling with the judgment and office of God and pronouncing sentence and punishment with the most severe verdict. For no judge can punish to a higher degree nor go farther than to say he is a thief, a murderer, a traitor, etc. Therefore, Whoever presumes to say the same of his neighbor goes just as far as the emperor and all governments. For although you do not wield the sword, you employ your poisonous tongue to the shame and hurt of your neighbor. See, in the Eighth Commandment, God teaches us that your reputation is precious enough to defend. That it's a sin to attack your reputation with words, every bit as much as is it a sin to attack your body with a weapon. God would actually see you spoken well of. When we break the Eighth Commandment, we say, Jesus, I know that you are the judge. I know that you are the one who's supposed to call down punishment, but you're not doing it fast enough. And so I'm going to use words to make sure they hurt. I'm going to ruin their reputation so that they suffer because they sinned. I'm going to extract punishment. I'm going to judge. And the thing is, the real judge, Jesus, well, he has already judged your neighbor. He called them guilty. He called them a sinner. And then he died for all of their sins. All of those sins were punished on the cross, and it is finished. When we break the Eighth Commandment, we work against the cross of Christ. When we break the Eighth Commandment, we say that either Jesus wasn't punished enough for that particular sin and they need to suffer more, or that that sin just wasn't died for by Jesus. When we break the Eighth Commandment, when we tell lies about our neighbor, or betray him, or slander him, or hurt his reputation, we work against the Lord's chief work of the cross. We work against the forgiveness that he speaks there, the identity of holiness that he works there. To set yourself against this is its a dangerous thing. I know that it's easy to mouth off when you get upset and when you get hurt. I know that it's easy to extract punishment on somebody with words. The thing is, you're allowed to know that sin is wrong, but you should also know that Jesus died for that. You should also know that there is healing in that cross. You should be able to find peace there, not just between you and God, but even between your neighbor and God, that when you might see their sins, you can always see Jesus bearing them on the cross. This is what the cross is for, that we might see all sin punished there, all of the sins that hurt us, the sins that we commit, and the sins committed against us. And there, finding Christ to pay for all of them, there's nothing left to speak against. There's nothing left to punish. We don't need to damage a reputation to extract revenge. Judge not, lest you be judged. Know that a sin is wrong, but also know that Jesus died for it. Higher Things thanks you for your support. Please continue to support the work we do with youth by going to our website at higherthings.org, clicking on the support and donating securely through PayPal. Your gift helps us in our mission to support pastors, youth workers, and parents in daring our church's youth to be Lutheran. Higherthings.org slash support. Give today.